Welcome back, everybody. Here we are, featured boot camp new session. This is March 23. This is our most popular course series that we've done and was the very first one that we started doing here on Script Camp. This is Write a Movie in Eight Weeks. My name's Connor, and I'm the instructor here at Script Camp, and I've been teaching this for about two years now. We've brought so many students through their very first ever feature film. They've had ideas for a long time, but have never been able to, for instance, start to shape that into a cohesive movie concept and we will take you all the way from your idea to a completed first draft of that script in just eight weeks. <clears throat> it may not be perfect, it may not be very good at all, but those things are not the goal. The goal is to have a finished draft and to always be continuing this cycle of planning the next thing, writing and executing, getting feedback, revising and editing, finalizing, and then moving on to the next thing, because this is how you will learn and improve the most, is by continuing to write and move on to the next project. So try not to get hung up on stuff for too long. Boot camps like this are a great way to sort of encourage yourself to be sticking to these milestones and moving towards the completion of the project in a reasonable time frame, between 8 and 12 weeks for most of our courses, which when you're writing <coughs> in the industry a first draft for a feature, will you'll often get between 8 and 12 weeks to write it. So it's a good goal to aim for. This is a stage style class, so you'll have to click that hand icon if you want to be able to speak out loud and answer questions about your ideas and things like this and to workshop your concept. So make sure that you click the hand icon if you'd like to speak. And then once you click it you and you are brought invited to the stage, you will have to click that green accept button on the bar that comes up on the top of the screen. Um, so make sure that you, you know that you have to click two separate buttons in order to be uh, speaking. We are this here, this class is uh, script camp. So this is our sort of central class in script camp, just how to write a movie, but we have many other classes and servers as well with lots of different topics you can see behind me. We have um, word camp, which is our next biggest one, which is focused on writing novels, short stories, and prose. We have novel writing boot camps that take you all the way from idea to finished draft of a new book. That will be starting its new session within a couple of weeks on word camp. Um, we have film camp for filmmaking, code camp for coding, Toon Camp for animation, Game Camp for game design, all kinds of stuff that are part of Skill Camp's um, umbrella of servers. We are a nonprofit that offers free and low cost classes to learn new skills and reach your life goals. I'm a professional screenwriter who moved to LA in 2015, no connections at all, but got signed for the first time in 2017, and since then have had a career mostly sort of uh, setting up and rewriting other people's horror thriller features and things like this. Um, I also wrote an episode of Creep Show back in 2019, and um, I teach the boot camps and weekly writers lab. Have never published a novel, but have written many novels, and so I teach the the uh, novel classes as well. We have Script Swap twice a week, Tuesdays at five and Fridays at nine a.m. Writer's Voice, which is prose readings, Saturday seven p.m., Thursday ten a.m., and those are live readings of novels, short stories, poems, or nonfiction sections from your written work that you can then get immediate feedback on. We also have table reads three times a week, Sunday 2 p.m., Tuesday 11 a.m., Saturday 1 a.m. Pacific time, which is our international time slot, so you can see all the other times. That one just makes it a little bit more accessible worldwide. Here's just a sample of all the different events, workshops, and classes going on on the different servers. And with new sessions of many of these boot camps starting soon, we hope you guys if you're curious, sign up, maybe give it a try. If you sign up for Unlimited, which you can do in time for our new novel class to start, you can do that at scriptcamp.net. Scroll down to Unlimited, and you can see here that you can enroll now. You get access to lots of great things by enrolling in Unlimited, such as access to member-exclusive chat channels, um, exclusive log lines with me, Discord channel, um, the access to the video library, which will be recordings of all the previous classes. You get huge discounts off proofreads and things like this, as well as 100 script coins each month, which can be spent on table reads for your work, amongst other things. And if you subscribe yearly, you do save 40%. If you subscribe today, you'll also sign up just in time for the new sessions to start, as well as a new session of Writer's Lab tomorrow, 4 to 6 p.m., so you could be able to bring and workshop up to five pages of anything you have as early as tomorrow. So make sure you sign up, scriptcamp.net. You'll be able to sign up for Unlimited there, or you can buy a class just on its own if you don't want to subscribe. 
If you look in the chat right now, you'll see there's a bunch of blue numbers that Nacho just posted. Thank you, Nacho. And those are going to be, you can click on those different numbers to vote on if you're interested in one of the upcoming boot camps or maybe you have other questions or something like that. So feel free to take a look in the chat. You can mouse over the classroom channel and click the small white word bubble that says open chat. And by doing that, you can open the chat on the right hand part of your screen and both participate in the class in the text form by pasting in things like your comments, questions, thoughts, and eventually log lines if you want to share those. And you can also vote in polls and things like that. So take a look at the chat if you are on our Discord channel. And if you're watching on one of our other sites like Twitch or um, YouTube, then we're glad to have you. Thank you for being here. We can often see your comments, but it can take a little longer for them to show up or for us to see them sometimes. So we would encourage you just to come join us on Discord because you can participate in a more direct way in the classes and even speak out loud and share your ideas and things like this. Um, you can find our, the link to our Discord channel if you just simply go to scriptcamp.net, which is our main website. So here's the overview for the feature bootcamp. This is an eight week course. This is week zero. So this is going to sort of be the, uh, a preview class of the upcoming course. <coughs> we also have next week being the rewrite bootcamp, which is another one-off. <coughs> <coughs> it's a one-off class, excuse me. That is um, going to give you a crash course on rewriting, and that is going to be two classes before we start with our week one, which you can see here begins on April 12th. Wait a minute, these dates seem off. Nacho, can you uh, clarify, are these dates correct? Because one of these is in, it says February, so does, does that mean that uh, the boot camp is in fact starting on the 12th? Uh, sorry, yeah, <clears throat> that's a typo. So they should be just following from um... April 19th, 26th, and then that's meant to be in May. The following, the week four will be in May. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. No worries. So, like, <laughs> yeah, just forget the dates that you see on here for now. Um, but this is the, is this still the correct order of classes, Nacho? So this is the next, what is it, 10 weeks? Uh, yes, okay. exactly. Uh -huh. So this mm -hmm. is the next 10 weeks at this same time slot, which is Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we, will, we will swap out those dates so that they say the correct thing. Um, so we are starting with our overview, then you have that extra week in between, which is going to touch on rewrites. If you don't have a rewrite, you obviously don't need to go to that, and nor do you need to really attend any specific classes. This is like a college style course, meaning that you can come and go, like there's no, we're not going to be giving you grades and things like that. It's up to you to come to whichever classes you need to in order to get to the end of your script and move on to the next one. If you don't need to go to the classes to do that, then obviously you don't need to be attending the classes at all. Um, and you can skip and drop in and out whenever you want to. You can even visit other boot camps, and if you're thinking, I want to maybe try out TV, maybe try out novels or things like that, you definitely can do that. But we uh, we have found that no one in our two years has completed both scripts if they have tried to do multiple scripts at once in multiple different boot camps. So trying to write a movie and a book at the same time, things like this, you will not be able to finish them all within this, the boot camp time frame. So I don't recommend trying. I recommend just focus on one thing at a time. Many have tried and all have failed. So I would not take that as a challenge. I would take that as uh, encouragement to focus your efforts on one thing before moving to the next thing and try your absolute best. Try to say this thing is pretty much done. I mean, you can always swap back and forth between drafts. For instance, you finish a draft of something, you write a draft of something else, you come back and rewrite. You might find some success doing something like that, but at least in terms of being actively working on projects, I recommend just one at a time. Oh, Connor, if you hit refresh, it should show the correct dates now. Oh, great. Thank you, Nacho. Let's get the corrected dates on there. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So that gives us our first week on April 12th with the first draft complete by June 7th. So you have eight weeks for the whole thing. Today, the week zero class goes into the preview of everything that's coming up. So this is a big overview of this now. Um, and of um, the way, as we move through the slides today, we will cover a lot of just the absolute basics and get those norm those kind of beginner questions out of the way. Whatever you are <coughs> burning to ask, if you've never written a movie before, maybe you have questions about the basics of the crafter business of this, then today's a great time to get those answered. As well as later in the class today to get your first round of feedback if you want on whatever it is that you ha are working on. Ideally, you have a feature that idea already. If you don't, maybe you have a few separate ideas and you can just kind of weigh in today and get some guidance and feedback or a push in the right direction if that is what you need. 
That's what it says the text looks blurry. Hmm, let me check. You mean on my stream? The projector's big enough. Yep, I'm not sure why that would be. The OBS window is as big as it gets. Let me flip to a different slide. Hmm. Or I'll adjust the window one second. Oh dear, I may have cut out our whole stream. Let me uh, change windows, one second. Uh, Nacho, I might have broken everything in the entire world. I'm not sure. Now, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, so, one second. I will okay. be. The... It looks like the, the um, you know, social media stream is still running. It looks is. Like it. Oh, good. What's it showing? Yeah. I wonder. Mm -hmm. So, I just uh, brought the. Let's see. I just shared my screen again. Is the. If the stream's it, not interrupted, is... we should be good, right? It is kind of blurry. Maybe try. Wait, wait, I wait. mean, I got it. Is that 15 better? FPS. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. It. Great. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, let's resume where we were. We are at um, overview. Okay. So yes, we are finishing this first draft by June seventh. So let's get the basics out of the way today and look at the uh, look ahead at the entire process. Get all the questions answered and get that early feedback if you are ready to on just whatever you have for your idea, even if it's very undeveloped. You can ask questions about it and get yourself on the right track. Uh, first week will be April 12th, and that is another um, free and public class. Usually our week ones are usually totally open to everybody, but if you'd like to be in the rest of these, you will have to sign up and subscribe if you've not already done so. And from week one, the first we go through the first four weeks, which are all about outlining, figuring out essentially what happens in every moment of your story and getting a really solid outline written down. Scene cards, meaning full paragraph for every scene, as well as estimates for the page counts and things like that. We like to get really fastidious and organized and plan out the architecture for the entire script before we even write a single word of it. And then the second half of the course is all about writing the movie. So every week you're gonna be writing about 20 to 25 pages of scripts, but, not, but because you spent four weeks planning out obsessively what happens on every page, it should be much easier to actually get those scenes down and not worry too much about, well, what what is supposed to happen next in the story? And we work through all the way up until week eight, um, sort of touching on whatever section of the script that we're on and covering broader topics like dialogue, theme and argument, tone and genre, and things like that, and capping off with third act on May 31st, with that first draft intended to be completed a week after the final session, which is going to be June 7th. Okay, um, so let's maybe open to the crowd. Anyone feel free to raise a hand and say, introduce yourself if you want to, ask any beginner questions that you have, any just stuff right off the top of your head that you think you can answer pretty quickly. Maybe tell us what are your goals or what are you hoping to write or favorite writer, you're hoping to write something just like that. Um, whatever you'd like to share about yourselves or, or initial questions that just come up. Um, let's ask who would like to share. Nobody. Okay. Nobody would like to share. Nacho, do you want to share? Um, sure, sure. So, yeah, I, <clears throat> so I, you know, started writing, like, um, when I was in high school, um, and I just wrote, a, like, a bunch of scripts that were, like, horrible. Like, just, you know, I had kind of, like, an idea of kind of movies I wanted to see, and I was going to, you know, show those uh, idiots in Hollywood, you know, <laughs> like the, what what a movie could be, right? And I had all, and and I think you know, I, I actually you know maybe had some good ideas, but I it, it basically there wasn't like a coherent story there, right? And it took a long time, you know, kind of a long route to get to where I was working in a job where I had to actually read a lot of scripts and I had to sort of like understand what were the problems with the scripts that I was reading and I started getting back into you know screenwriting and studying with you know mentors and stuff and um, I guess I, I would say like um, it took me a lot of you know 
kind of writing a lot of bad scripts. I, I still don't consider myself to be a good writer. You know, I'm still, it's something I'm still very much still a student, still learning. But I, I got to a point where I, you know, um, was able to write coherent stories, you know, even like with the first draft, which w was something that, you know, I really struggled with before. And a big part of it was learning how to write, you know, kind of basically like Connor's process, which is like come up with a log line that you can tell from the log line whether this is going to be a movie or not, you know, whether there's someone who's pursuing some kind of a goal or not. Um, that took a long time to really kind of learn. And um, I, you know, I've tried, I've been writing for a long time. So I had lots of different, you know, tried lots of different approaches to outlining. Um, when I first saw Connor's kind of, which you'll see sort of like his very detailed, methodical, very practical approach, um, including, you know, where you're, you're using the log line gives you a lot of the story beats, you know, it's a way to break the story pretty quickly. And you're, story beats your help you to kind of like develop scene cards which is like a detailed you know figuring out what's happening in every scene that's something that i hadn't done before right we're really like starting page one like already having a really clear idea of like what's happening in every scene that really just it, it seemed like a lot of work um the first time i tried it I was, you know, it was work because it is writing. You're, you're basically writing the whole story in your scene cards. You're figuring out what is the whole story. Um, but I, I went through this process and it really freed me up. I mean, it's like a bit longer outlining, um, but I was able to like, you know, the first script that I did like that, I think I wrote the whole script in like 10 days. Um, and then from there, I found that I was able to like write, you know, typically writes like, you know, a, 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 a draft that at least makes sense, like within a <laughs> a much shorter period of time. So um, as opposed to, you know, writing a, a draft and then it having so many problems that you have to go back and like kind of, you know, figure out what the real story is and all that. So I, I, this this is a approach that I wish I had learned when I first started. Thanks, Nacho. And Nacho, by the way, co-founder of Script Camp and also runs many events around the server and um much of the discord um and how many how how many times have we heard this one nacho where somebody will be like i had this great idea i outlined a little bit i had some idea i have it mostly in my head though so i just sort of jumped in and i got going and now i'm stuck i have writer's block uh how do i finish it right like mm, i had i had the major things down but i'm not sure how to connect now and figure out how to get from a to b and as a result of that i can't finish and because i can't finish i will just get stuck on this project for a long time how often have we heard that, do you think? Um, yeah, like every day. Every, every single day, yes. <laughs> every so day. I think that um, this, if it, it be, because people tend to gravitate towards the fun parts of something. And once it stops being fun or stops being fulfilling or stops feeling like you're making progress, it becomes very easy to say, okay, I guess I have enough now. I'll just move on to the writing part. And therefore, I can get to the part where... I'm doing the thing that creates the endorphins that sort of accesses what I found fun about this in the first place. And then it runs you into problems because you sometimes are building an, on a shaky foundation. And we are approaching this or as professionals, I think the way I approach it myself and the way that I at least teach, I'm not saying this is the only way to approach this, but this is a replicable way that I have found great success with and um, can would encourage you to at least try is this way of approaching it, not just in this kind of slapdash way where we just gravitate towards the fun like a moth to the flame but you're in fact approaching this much more architecturally by starting off with a strong foundation meaning like you make sure first the idea works and then we want to express that idea in the clearest and cleanest possible way so we work up from the sketchbook and the concept to a log line which is going to be that one sentence that supports the rest of the architecture of the movie because it expresses not only generally what happens in the plot but also the kind of experience this is, the promises that you're making, and the expectations that you are sort of calibrating for what you're going for with the story. Once that's rock solid, then you start to layer on top of that. Okay, what's the skeletal outline for the plot? How can I start to um, expand on that and to add muscle and tissue and all these things that connect moment to moment? And then from there, how can you expand on that even further to make sure that every scene is going to be as substantial and weighty and important and full of whatever emotion I'm trying to create as it needs to be? 
So you, you can't really, I, I realize I, <clears throat> did I mix the metaphors between putting <laughs> meat on a skeleton and creating a tower? I guess I did. But if you are, well, let's stick with one at a time, so just the tower thing. Um, if we don't have the solid foundation, you start layering stuff on top of it, it becomes very easy to freeze halfway through and say, I don't know how to finish this, and if I touch anything, it will all fall down. I don't know how the separate component parts of this work or how they're working together. And therefore, I wouldn't be able to reconstruct this if it got damaged or, like, nudged by the wind or things like that. And when you're writing a movie that is, <coughs> you know, moving into development or even towards, you know, pre-production or production and things like this, you have to be able to fix the building no matter what happens to it. Like, if it gets nudged from the side or if it gets hit by lightning, you have to be able to assess it, uh, realize which timbers have been damaged and pull those out while keeping the structure intact. Like, so, there's so much more to being a professional writer than just being able to write a good story. Um, it's being able to understand stories in general and act as kind of a mechanic and expert in storytelling that is on staff for the remainder. Hopefully, we want to be on staff. We want to be the script department for that movie. It's easy to get fired off your own movie and replaced, and it happens all the time, but you're le that's less likely to happen if you can prove to everyone that the ship is in good hands and that they are in calm waters and that you are in full control and that you have a great degree of confidence and experience in just what makes stories fit together and work. So these are all very important things to be able to do. Um, let's just double check if anybody else wanted to introduce themselves. I think we do have one from Dakota. Thank you, Dakota. He says, I started writing 11 years ago, went to film school, became a graphic designer, social media marketer, and independent filmmaker, but I've stepped back from the industry after some tragedy. This past year, I've gotten back into writing again and feel more confident now than I have ever, largely because of this server. That's so great. Kudos to this place for helping me get through difficult stuff. Thanks, Dakota. Sorry to hear you've been having some hard time. And yeah, if you if the deadlines and the community and things like that are helpful for getting you back on track, then that's just great. So we hope that, you know, a lot of people find that on their own, they don't have that same level of objectives and things to aim for and accountability and deadlines to keep you on the, you know, on the on the right track. And it can be easy to drift away from the right track if you don't have that community that's supporting you. So that's what we like to be here for. Um, if no one else wants to say anything by way of introduction, um, then, and um, and yes, we, we are also, I'm seeing uh, comments on the YouTube channel. Oh, that's Nacho, just posting. Welcome, this is a live stream writing class. You can ask questions or join the stream. Yep, so if you're on Facebook, Twitch, or any of these places, you can still comment, and we usually will be able to see it pretty soon. Okay, so let's look at ground rules for the upcoming boot camp if we're done with introductions for the moment. So if you don't have an idea yet, just be thinking in terms of what would be some crazy, fun, weird thing. Like, not everything can be a passion project, and especially if you're trying to write movies professionally in Hollywood, a lot of what you're writing are not going to be passion projects. So I would just kind of separate yourself from this idea that everything needs to be all or nothing, like the thing you've been working on since you were a child, the thing you've labored for your entire life. Very few of the scripts that you write will be like that. And so I say distance yourself and detach yourself a little bit from the ideas and be willing to write something that doesn't turn out that well that you're not going to be sort of devastated by. Um, and that you don't feel a great degree of pressure to get just right. If it's going to dishonor your family or offend somebody or not bring proper justice to a, a certain subjugated community or something like this, if you get the script wrong, then maybe it should not be something you're writing to learn how to write scripts. That's something you should be attempting to tackle after you've gotten really good already. But if you're just starting out, you won't be really good at this. It's very difficult to write a solid movie, let alone a great movie, let alone write so many great movies that you can then leverage those and get the, the right meetings, that get them to the right people, and to build a career that takes a lot of time and a lot more than just writing one single good movie. But writing one single good movie is, like, monumentally challenging. So you can see how this is a lot of work. This isn't all just the fun parts. This is homework. This requires homework and reading and paying attention and if you approach this with TikTok cook, cooked up Gen Z gamer brain or whatever it is then you will struggle with this because this is this takes a lot of time and attention this is sort of running you know a medium length marathon it's not a novel that's a long marathon but a movie's longer than a pilot so this is our sort of medium length choice that's going to take you several months of intensive work and then you have that wonderful luxury of moving on to the next thing because you didn't, it wasn't your passion project. It doesn't matter if you go, you don't have to do 10 drafts of it. You can do two or maybe three drafts if you really want to, or you can do one draft and decide, wow, I sure learned a lot from that. I'm gonna move on to the next thing having gained and you know, grasped a greater appreciation 
for the difficulty of this and now I know the minds to look out for the next time I set out on this dangerous journey. I have a great kind of sense of what the kinds of dangers I will challenge or I will encounter are going to be and how can I account for those early on. So that's how I would look at these boot camps. Like try to finish in the boot camp, finish the scripts, doesn't have to be great, move on to the next one and just do script. You will almost always learn more from writing script after script than you will from obsessing over one for a long time that you may not have even had the skills to make that great in the first place. You will learn exponentially more from reading, writing, and moving on to the next thing. Um, also try to get used to sharing ideas even at these early stages with fellow students and with me and with the world, you know, because although we can be protective of our ideas and maybe we're even worried we will, you know, writers are very sort of sensitive, emotional people and we can worry that if I share it too early on, somebody might dunk on my idea, then I'll feel bad about it, then I won't want to write that thing anymore, or things like this. But you do have to sort of work on this idea that newer ideas require more work and feedback than ideas that have been thoroughly worked out, right? So you have to go in anticipating that every idea, any, no matter what you share, it's going to get some kind of feedback. If you don't want any feedback at all and you think it's absolutely perfect, you can just skip the, that step. You don't have to share at all if you really don't want to, um, but by sharing, you are saying, I am opening this to feedback and accepting it. There's nobody that really reads screenplays casually, so the only people that will be reading screenplays are going to be those who will be giving you feedback. And to that extent, it's a lot of, uh, it's kind of a big ask of somebody to read your script and to work on it and give you that sort of level of attention um, and expertise. So try to appreciate the notes and the feedback for the spirit that they are intended in. It's not people trying to, you know, ruin your vision or tear you down or things like that, but receiving and incorporating feedback is such a vital part of being a professional screenwriter. We have a question in the chat. Um, thank you for that from uh, eight something. I'm in streamer mode, so I can't see his whole username for some reason. Um, when starting out, is it better to write a short film or a feature film first? That is up to you. I would say probably a short. Um, a short is just gonna be like a fraction of the amount of pages and the amount of work. Um, there aren't as many examples to draw from because most people don't really watch or read shorts and it's kind of hard to find scripts for shorts online. But you can definitely find those around the server and other film communities like this if you're looking for short examples to read. But yeah, I mean, it's just so much less planning, so many, so many, so few, so many fewer pages. Um, it's just such a substantially smaller amount of work overall that it would be a quick way to just get to get used to the basics of the format. So yeah, I would encourage you to write a short first um, if if you are wondering. But then again, there's nothing wrong with just trying a feature right out of the gate if you want to. Um, I would pick something brand new rather than a major rewrite if you are wondering what to work on. Um, though we do technically, we do support rewrites as well in these bootcamp programs. It's going to be kind of flexing different muscles and focusing on different things. Like I would approach rewrites differently than a brand new draft. So if you're starting out and just trying to improve, I would not really pick the passion project that you tried for four to 10 drafts of in the past and could never get right. I would in fact focus on the new thing, a newer idea. You're trying to learn how to write movies. You're not trying to write the perfect movie right out of the gate. Some other guidelines. Don't do true stories, anthologies, or adaptations, or anything else that just requires extra research and reading and, and because like what you're doing is already difficult enough on the eight to 12 week kind of time frame, And uh, you just don't want to add extra work. We're already front loading the work. You don't want to front load additional work on top of it. So anything that requires that attention would be not the best idea. Time travel, just probably don't do it for similar reasons. It's like almost impossible to get a coherent time travel story working well in feature format, but like beyond that, um, when you go into rewrites especially, rewriting a time travel, like it's hard enough to rewrite a linear chronological modern day realistic story, let alone, excuse me, let alone one that has multiple timelines and, you know, paradoxes and characters undoing the past and characters re-undoing the past and all this kind of crazy stuff is just like so hard to keep straight on the page. We've never seen a script camp student complete a time travel script. Um, probably don't do a historical just for similar reasons and also just, or, well, for the main reason, I guess I would say of that research problem, unless you have that strong foundation in the time period that you're going to be writing about already. You're, you know, you watch nothing but Westerns, so maybe you can probably write a Western or something like that, but I would just not recommend, if you can choose between something contemporary or something historical, you, you pr probably want to go with a thing that will not take extra research. So either contemporary or fantastical, like if it's a different world or something like that that you are creating on your own. 
ideally you don't want to be doing crazy amounts of world building, but try to reduce that workload at the early stage as much as you can. Um, this is just a great time to, to take a big swing, though. Try something weird. Um, try something kind of funny, or like that's sort of a joke, or that just um, amuses you. You know, what about a movie about a panda that becomes a lawyer? Okay, panda lawyer. That could be a good comedy. I don't know. Uh, if we do Kung Fu Panda, you know, why not a legal drama about a panda? <clears throat> so pick something, pick something amusing um, that just tickles you and will keep you entertained and engaged for the eight weeks and that you won't feel too bad about moving on from. Can you guys hear the children shrieking in my hallway? It's like a, it sounds like a Chuck E. Cheese out there. <laughs> uh, okay, so those are just some, guide, some guidelines at the beginning of types of ideas that I'd recommend choosing. Oh, and nothing with really complicated structures or styles like things with lots of different copies of the same person, people in different bodies or people swapping between bodies like what's it called, altered carbon or um, Freaky Friday or things like that, body swap or body switching type stories, and anything that involves complicated structures of um, timelines. So for instance, uh, an investigation story that takes place within different um, years that sort of intersect, think along the lines of, you know, your psychological thrillers like Gone Girl and things like this. I would not really recommend trying to tackle anything with immensely complicated structure as a, a boot camp script or as your first couple scripts. Sometimes people look at these guidelines, they're like, I guess you just want us to write straightforward, boring, modern day dramas, which I can't possibly do, which is not the case at all. You can write any, absolutely any genre that you want, but we're trying to reduce the workload. And the more that you reduce the workload, the more you will allow, um, you know, uh, give yourself the tools that you need to finish a script in eight weeks. It's a lot of work. You don't want to add more work. Okay, um, so let's look at the general idea of the different weeks. We start with, let me move out of the way. Uh, we start with logline and sketchbook. So we're building the foundation, we're, we're laying the concrete down in place, and then we're gonna start adding the wooden framework on top of that, and then you start to add the metal framework around that, and then you add the drywall, then you add the wallpaper, then you add the paint on the outside, etc. So glass in the windows, and roof on the on the top and things like that are the last things that you do. You really need to go through this one step at a time, make sure that you are building on a strong foundation. A strong foundation usually takes the place it takes the form of a log line, which is the one sentence expression of the movie's premise. It's the answer to the question of what is this about? It's about this guy who has this problem, who tries to solve it in this way, and this is what's fun about it, is kind of what we're saying. Um, as we establish log lines, we will be able to establish that foundation and move ahead into story beats in week two, which is going to be the that wooden framework, right? That bamboo framework for the, maybe we're building with our panda character, right? So building the bamboo framework on top of the concrete, where now we are starting to figure out the major moments of the story and the major things that need to happen in the general shape and order that they need to be in. And then scene cards are week three. So you will be moving, um, expanding from those story beats into a full paragraph for every scene, as well as the exact page numbers that you estimate it to take place on as well as a little title for that scene so you can keep track of the specific purpose and function of each element. And also you'll have a great, really detailed roadmap through the whole story. Then week four to eight, we go to pages, which is a really common industry term for meaning going from pre-writing and outlining to actually executing on the page, writing out the scenes and dialogue and blocking and everything else. Any questions about the general overview of a course or how the class works. Okay, if there's no questions, we'll move ahead in past a couple slides here. We are going into, oh my gosh, we've done enough disclaimers and things, haven't we? Um, basically, I'm just going to sum up these last five slides to say, don't worry if your script is any good. You should be picking ideas and approaching this in such a way that it doesn't matter if it turns out if it's good or not. The goal is not to coach you into writing a great script or something that will go anywhere or that will get made or that will get you any meetings or get you any money or anything at all. It's all just going to be practice for the first, like, I don't know, dozen scripts that you write or more. It takes many years of writing many scripts to get to a high level where you're actually going to be selling these things or having a career especially with the industry in its legendarily terrible position that it is in right now with a potential upcoming additional strike in the summer. We don't know yet. So it's a very bad time to be breaking into the business, but it's a fine time to be honing your craft and waiting for this dark time to sort of pass. 
And by the time it does, you will have a portfolio built up and your skills will be where they need to be. So you can be, you know, hopefully employable in Hollywood. So try to just release yourself from the expectation that, uh, of, you know, oh, I have to get this thing made. This movie needs to happen. I need to sell this to pay the rent or save my grandma or anything else. This is a long road, a lot of work, and nobody starts out good at it. Let's move past all this boring disclaimers and all these warnings about how hard and doom and gloomy this is. I just told you the industry is pretty bad right now. Um, so on top of the already incredible difficulty of breaking into this field, um, let's maybe just look at the basic steps for how to be a feature writer. Obviously, this changes all the time, and who knows what this will look like in a couple of years. But currently, as I understand it, this is essentially the beaten path. So step one is going to be get very good at writing movies, which is the step you are probably on now, and the step that many folks are on now is just the, you know, this is the, the, that first hurdle right out of the gate. Um, step two is actually go back and do step one. You didn't actually do it. You moved ahead to step two before you were ready, probably. I know I definitely did. I mean, I was in college, and I was like, great, how do I start querying? I've written three or four features. Um, three or four features is almost certainly not enough. You need to be working on a portfolio of ultimately three to five sort of core scripts that you say, this is my active working portfolio that I share with people when they say, hey, send me a sample. Maybe like three or four scripts that are going to be unique and riveting and really in your voice and of your experience. And, you know, they feel like they reflect your skill set and also what you bring to the table. Um, that takes many years to sort of make a portfolio of that level of quality. Um, and generally that, generally, that portfolio should be mostly in similar, like, linked genre areas. So we have these sort of different imaginary umbrellas that would encompass different types of genres. You might imagine that in one category we have things like romance, comedy, and musical. Um, that's the kind of light genre bucket. And then over here you have the, you know, horror, thriller, and action. And dark sci-fi, that's going to be your other, the kind of opposite end of that spectrum. And then you might have... Um, uh, political thriller, espionage, and war, which is all going to be in its own sort of separate category as well. Um, everything from your West Wing to your Tom Clancy to your courtroom stuff, that's all going to be in its own kind of distinct category as well. So you want them to be like connected to each other in some sort of way to make it feel like you are some specific kind of writer. If you're just like, I don't know, I have a legal thriller, I have a comedy, I have a slasher movie, I have a romance, I don't know, what do you want? It just feels like you aren't that uh, kind of focused and it's better to actually stick to one area and make it feel like that's your thing that's your brand and it helps to be pigeonholed a tiny bit even if it's a wider pigeonhole like horror thriller and action is what i mostly write and that is a pretty broad category and can also you can throw in things like dark comedy or um uh the uh, uh, maybe a sci-fi or something like that here and there which sort of feel like they fit in that general sort of overview so um Try to, you don't have to stick to only one specific genre, but try to pick to one type of genre. Um, so I'm going to skip a bunch of slides just for the purposes of avoiding repetition, but we will just kind of sum this up to say, A, you are, you know, you're laying a long brick road. You don't need to worry about whether any individual brick is a masterpiece or not, or even whether it's particularly good because you have the next brick to get to, so... Try to approach it that way. You're not you're not making masterpieces. You're not digging for gold. You are laying bricks, and you got to get to the next brick. Okay, so now you can, if you want to, go ahead and create your sketchbook. Uh, just go to Google Docs, make a new document, call it Name of Movie Sketchbook. If you don't have a name in the movie, call it I don't know Crocodile Movie Sketchbook or Comedy Movie Sketchbook, whatever you have. And at the top, you have sort of four things that you want to try to fill out as much as you can. Fill out whatever you know. And if you don't know, you can leave it as a question mark for now, or you can ask about it and try to get that filled in today if you'd like. But those are essentially title, genre, logline, and comps. Logline can take a while to get just right, and as can many of these, so don't worry if you don't finalize any of these immediately. But what do these mean? Title, we all get what title is. Genre is, try to list just a maximum of two different genres that are kind of blended together. If you start listing off more than two, it's just going to start to feel like incomprehensible nonsense. And you don't have to include a genre for every shade or m of moment that the story has in it. Just because it has some funny parts here and there does not mean that it is comedy necessarily. Think of like the experience overall. 
Logline is going to be that one expression, one sentence expression of the idea. We will talk more about that and also be able to give early feedback on those young, you know, growing larval drafts of your log lines today. Um, if you have anything that's just ready to go, or, or maybe you have questions about which idea you should choose or something like that, pretty soon um, you will have some chance to share those and to ask those questions. Um, log line, we will go more into the format of that in just a moment. Comps are going to be the last thing, and that's going to be movies to compare your movie to to help clarify what your goals and intentions are and what the emotional tone of the experience is going to be and stuff like that. So content and tone are basically what comps are telling us. And you might think of it as maybe like the world of the first thing with the style, tone, or approach of the second thing. It doesn't have to be exactly like that, but um, just, in, in you, by the way, are going to boil this down to two, but you can make a you can list out a bunch of ideas if you're not totally sure what you want to settle on yet. So you're saying, I don't know, it's a movie about a killer robot, so I'm going to list... Um, Terminator, and also uh, AI, and also, uh, what's another killer robot movie? Uh, Megan. So those are three killer robot stories. You don't need to know exactly which ones will describe yours, but they do have different tones and sort of implications of choosing one over the other. Okay, so go ahead and just create that sketchbook now if you want to, if you want to start immediately, and try to fill out those questions as best you know the answers. Let's go a little more into sketchbook as you start to fill those out. So there's no real right or wrong way to do it. I mean, I say you should include those four things at the top because those are sort of those key most important questions in building your foundation to establish. But um, it's a great place to collect your notes and sketches and ideas as you continue to flesh out and develop the story. They don't have to feel like it's, it doesn't really have to feel extremely cohesive or entertaining in the sketchbook at all. You don't have to be writing out lines of dialogue, but you can write, write, write down snippets if you have any ideas for maybe like a line a character would say at one point or you have an idea for some moment you'd want to have or some kind of scene or some sequence like you should just be writing down every single thing that you have for this idea locations characters um, rules of the world details of the setting imagery moments creepy moments in your horror movie fun moments in your comedy movie exciting moments in your thriller and stuff like that so you're brainstorming and you're gathering and you're including research photos drawings links to articles or just anything else that helps inspire or inform your writing. And the sketchbook also is never really done. You don't ever turn this in and say, okay, finished, completed sketchbook, I wouldn't say. It's something that's a living document that you're always updating and adding stuff to as you think of new ideas, and maybe you're like, maybe I'll work out a couple other beats here. You really want this to be the sort of main central hub document. You don't want to have a bunch of documents for your for every single project, right? You want to limit it to sketchbook, story beats, scene cards, and I would keep your pre-writing documents to those three. Maybe a document for world building or research if you really need one. But that's only three, four documents per story. Any questions about sketchbook? Okay, let's move on. So logline is gonna be that central conflict distilled down into one sentence. This is sort of that answer to that question. What's the movie about? Um, we want to imply that it's going to be an entertaining and primarily you know, visually driven experience. We're gonna watch characters doing stuff. We don't wanna feel like this is gonna be a movie about characters sitting around thinking about stuff or t discussing stuff or um, theorizing about stuff or debating stuff unless that is all incredibly rivetingly dramatic like debate can be interesting in the case of a courtroom drama for instance but for the most part characters discussing stuff is very non-cinematic we want visual action characters making you know tangible progress toward tangible concrete goals that they then definitively either achieve or they don't the more metaphorical and abstract you get the, the more you're drifting away from the core promise of the log line which is going to be that building that solid foundation in the movie so we know what is the external journey that we're watching that kind of interweaves with an internal journey that has been largely implied through careful choice of your adjective to describe the main character and the trajectory of that character's arc that you are hinting at in the specific orchestration of the logline. So we want to say, who is it about? What is standing in their, or what do they want? What's standing in their way? And how are they kind of approaching solving that problem, making progress towards solving that problem? And you want to also build in this sense of what happens if they fail or they need to do it before this amount of time, or there is some sense of constraints or walls or ticking clock that's increasing the level of motivation, stakes, and urgency. 
It's a lot to do in one single sentence, and a lot of folks say, oh, you know, log lines are the bane of my existence. I hate log lines. Um, but uh, they're really helpful to learn how to do right and to get just right because this is one of the most important pieces of your movie. Like, there's this big debate over whether log lines are important or not. And if you, if you have somebody that's, gonna re that's already promised to read your movie, then no. But a log line is a tool that you're going to use to try to get people to read your movie by proving to them, A, that you know how to write a log line and you've respected their time enough to say, I can set you up for this experience that you're about to go on while giving you the key points of it, but I've also thought about this and I, I've boiled it down to just the essentials and you're not going to have to read paragraph after paragraph to understand the very basics of what this is. So it's part of just respecting the time of others and also making that early promise that they are in good hands because a strong log line it makes a good barometer to the quality of a script. Good log line, more likely to be a good script. So you want to build confidence at that early stage if you can. It's also going to help you stay on track and you can use the log line as more than just a piece of marketing but also something to help you determine if you've drifted too far from the core of what your story's promises were. Any questions on the basics of log lines, why we write them, what they, and uh, what the marketing or writing purposes are? I see somebody is typing in the chat, so you can feel free to continue that question, of course, but let's just bring up the logline templates. Not every single logline needs to fit in this exact format. You don't always need to use exactly this. And if you look at many lists, you'll see lots of loglines that don't really look like this. And there's a couple reasons for that. One being that largely the loglines you see on blacklists and hit lists and blood lists and things like this are going to be not strictly the ones that were originally written by the writer. They may have been modified by the, the writer's team of reps. Um, or anything else. So we can't exactly look at, you, you can't really look at IMDB or whatever and find the writer's official logline for that thing. And a lot of the loglines, the quote loglines you see for completed movies will have been written by fans or written by anybody else, right? So it's not like there's one definitive logline of most stories. Um, but that said, like all we can do is sort of write the best loglines that we can and, and build ours out in such a way that they do sort of represent what the experience is supposed to be like, what the main key points of that story are, who is it about? What do they want? Like the kind of brass tacks that would express to a potential reader, would I want to read this story? What happens in the story? And what is the general scope and feel of the story? Is this something that I would have the budget or the interest in being able to make? So there's your template. When or after inciting incident, an adjective protagonist must conflict before stakes. There's a couple ors in there. Or stakes or ticking clock, which is to say... We really just want to know what is the time constraint in terms of the urgency of the story. We like to have that great sense of both motivation, stakes, and urgency. So we know why the character is involved. That's motivation. Stakes means the level of gravity for the situation and what happens if they fail. And urgency means, well, why does it have to happen now or on what basic time frame does it need to happen? Do they have one night in order to find, you know, the magic potion to save their father's life? Or is it going to be, you know, this guy has... 20 years in order to raise an empire to defeat the Romans. Different scale and scope of stories that are expressed in the logline. This also gives you a, a head start on outlining because inciting incident happens usually in your, you know, that's your other, otherwise known as your catalyst happening around pages 10 to 15. So because you have that, you have a couple points you can just put on your outlining board and start connecting those narrative dots. Even as of you know, tomorrow, if you have a strong, <clears throat> if you work out a strong log line today, you would already have the first like four to six story beats that you'd be able to start working with and reverse engineering, you know, going back and forward from what, from, or back and forth, forward and backward from the points that you have on your plot board to connect them and make sure that you're filling out that, you know, that the, the scaffolding of your tower with the strongest possible material. Okay, um, we're going to open to questions about log lines and sketchbooks, and then I think we will simply, for the second half of our class, open to discussion and feedback. So if you have an early log line or part of a log line that you want to share, you can get a nudge in the right direction or get eyes on that and just ask opinions on the movie idea that you have. If you, if you don't even have anything written out yet that you just want to discuss or say the type of thing you want to make, and I can give you some tips or... or scripts to read or movies to watch to get ready and do research we can try that 
Um, it's basically open season on any questions about Logline and Sketchbook to begin with. So let's start by saying the floor is open to raise your hand and ask aloud if you'd like to know more about Logline and Sketchbook. Okay, if there's no questions, let's, um, before we go into story beats and structure and things like this, I'm going to just ask, does anyone have log lines or questions about their log lines, things that they want to share for feedback? You can post your title, genre, and log line in the chat. Thanks, Dakota. Anyone else, feel free share as well. And can I ask Dakota, are you able to speak out loud today to answer questions or will I have to just, you can, are you able to just use the text or you can raise your hand? Great. Thank you. Hello. Can you hear me? I hear you. Yes. Um, Wonderful. Glad to have you back. You were in our recent uh, art class, which was pretty fun. Woohoo. <laughs> so we've got a, one, so um, Sorry, say that again. No, you're good. Go ahead. We've got a dramedy. It's called Plymouth. Maybe you can tell us about this one. Sure. So, you know, working title at the moment. Not really sure what it is at the moment. Still searching for that. But it's a feature, um, and uh, it's. I, I'm excited to to work on something new. Um, basically, um, you know, don't have a whole lot in terms of anything else except the log line. Um, so um, after his father dies. A cynical history professor must reconcile with his estranged siblings before real estate development repossesses their mother's house for a new hotel. Okay, thanks for that. And this is yep. Dramedy with the Comps are Big Chill and Everyday People. All right. Yep. Um, maybe a bit of, uh, did, you, did you see Knives Out? Is that a, maybe a comp as well? Um, no, not really, because it's... Uh, Knives Out is more of a mystery with um, with a comedy in there. Uh, Big Chill is more is closer, and Everyday People is very close. Um, so, um, you know, this is it's more of it's. I would say it's it's still fifty fifty in terms of drama and comedy, um, and both of those movies are very much that as well. Sounds good. Understood. Um, Royal Tenenbaums is also a great other additional drama. Oh, yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> links coming together, right? Um, let's read it out and go back into it. So, um, after his father dies, a cynical history professor must reconcile with his estranged siblings before a real estate development company repossesses their mother's house. Real estate, a real estate company, you mean, right? Um, re yeah. Repossesses their mother's house for a new hotel. Okay, so can I just ask some questions to begin with? Sure. Okay, so reconcile with his estranged sibling before a real estate development company repossesses the house. So is the house like in default or something like that? Yeah, it's, it's yes. It is. Payments due on it and, and things like that, and the bank can repossess yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how? Yes, it's how, being repossessed. It's going to be repossessed. I'm sorry. Gotcha. Okay, so. How is reconciling with his siblings going to fix that problem? So they're all involved in terms of, like, they're in charge of taking care of their mother. Um, they're, they're trying to come together to save the house because it is the only place that she has. Um, they're trying to get her into nursing home. So basically, they're the only people that can do anything um in this situation because if they don't um then then their mother is going to just kind of be on the lurch um you know it's 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 not going to be good for her she's you know in her 70s you know that's not good for anybody um so 
they're the only persons that can solve the problem. Um, and meaning like, pull, you know, pool their money and pay, just pay it off like that. How, how, how will, it, how will coming together fix the problem? Well, a lot of it has to do with, you know, people, you know, when you have families that, you know, when you're, when you're estranged, yeah, you could just pull money together, but oftentimes people don't want to do that because of, you know, bitter grudges and things like that. So a lot of it is you, you have to kind of come to a consensus of what to even do first <laughs> to, to do that. So, so a lot of it is we have to fix the relationship and also because if we can't even do that, if we can't make a consensus as to what to even do, then, um, then, 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 then we can't, we, we can't do what we have to do for, for the sake of our mom. You know, that's the, that's the issue. It is, it, it's, it's more about the relationship than it is about the house. But once, so I'm just trying to answer the basic question of how will them joining forces solve the problem? When they're all on the same side, are you saying they have enough money that they would be able to save the house if they were simply all in agreement that that's what they should do? No, they don't. Mm -hmm. So how are they, how would reconciling solve the problem then? Well, a lot of it has to do with it. It doesn't actually. Because because it, it, it doesn't because it, it doesn't necessarily inherently mean that the problem is solved. Right? Then what's Just the because I'm confused you, now. I, I kind of lost the whole thread of the movie then in that case. You're saying the main character uh -huh. is trying to do something that wouldn't even solve the problem? Well, because the problem isn't necessarily the house. Isn't it? It it is it is and it isn't. <laughs> because I'm so, so what are you talking about okay <laughs> we're, so we're trying to save the house which requires just money right would money save the house yes but they don't have enough of it. but they don't have enough okay so you're saying they would need to yes. all join forces and do something additionally like we would need to come up with a plan of what we would need to do to save the house yes okay and what's the plan I haven't thought of that out yet. Okay, that's okay. You can always say I'm not sure yet. That's totally fine. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to solve I haven't the thought that out. <laughs> okay, you don't have to solve the problems. You don't have to solve the problems now. Don't worry. I'm not trying to say work sure. out everything. Yeah. Make sure it's all perfect right now. I'm just trying to figure sure. out what, what you know already. So so the point is sure. that in in order for this to be a more evocative and coherent log line, we want to kind of know what the actual plan is, right? So you could frame the whole movie around they have the money, they just can't all agree that they want this, and meaning that the sense of progress is sort of going to be that almost like 12 angry men thing where we have to get everybody to agree one at a time, right? Like, okay, fine. I'll right. pitch in. Okay. I'll pitch in. I'll pitch in next. And that could be a compelling family drama. I could easily see that being used to sort of meet out the sense of progress in a family drama. You can totally do that. But if that's not it, if you have something else they need to do, then you need to build that into the log line. If it's like that we need to come together to do a, I don't know, a big bake sale or make a movie or uh, run a race <laughs> or something like that. Right. You see how we're looking for where are we getting that sense of progress in your story. If you say that they're trying to do something that's not even possible, then I don't know what the sense of progress is anymore. It might just require you building out a little more of what their tactic actually becomes once they're able to come together. Or it might require you to ask, at what point in the movie do I want them all on the same page? Because if it's not until the very end, like the finale or something, then it's got to be something pretty simple that they can all get together and do. Whereas if we get them all sort of into one you know, solid Avengers-style team, by the midpoint, then you're going to want to have something more interesting and multi-step that they need to do rather than just, okay, now we're on the same side. We can all just chip in, you know, a few grand each and pay it off together. So we kind of want to know what are we going to be watching your characters do and what is their unique or interesting tactic that they have to... I mean, you're, the, the setup that you have is solid. I totally get the main character and the inciting incident and the problem that they're facing. You're, the thing that you would want to build out is going to be how do they address that problem and what is the specific tactic that they're going to be leaning on? Right. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Any way we can solve those problems now or any brainstorming you want to do, or do you just want to give it some more time to cook? Um, you know, I've only had this for like, you know, two weeks. So I might, I might just let this cook for a minute. Sure. Um, more, I don't have any other questions or, you know, brainstorming things or whatever. 
Um, so I'm all good, but thank you. No problem. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, sorry if I was too much like, what is this crap? Dude, no, 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 jerk yet. <laughs> jerk <that's> yet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, it so sounds like a solid movie. Just we that that it, it is a good it is a good foundation. It is it is that solid foundation and was well written. But like once we have that, then we want to start to add. We need we were just missing like the, the meat in the middle of the sandwich, which is now that we know the setup, we're on board, we're here for it, we understand what the character's trying to do and why. Okay, but what are they specific, what are we gonna watch people do for two hours? Um, thank you so much for sharing. Okie doke. Um, who else wants to share uh, log lines, early versions of your ideas? You can just ask questions, you can just say, I wanna write something sort of like that. Can you give me recommendations for things to read or watch maybe, I don't know. What else would you guys like to share that you have ready at this stage that you think could use some feedback or guidance to nudge you in the right direction? Stefan. All right. Hello. Hey there. Welcome, Stefan. Um, you've got an action adventure movie for us. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, it's an idea I had for a long time, and it kind of stuck with me for years. While most of the ideas that I come up, come up with, I, I realize they're really, really idiotic after a week. I mean, this one is also kind of idiotic, but I find it far fun for some reason. And I've been writing a bit and outlining and working on it for the past, like, two, three weeks. Yeah, so when a supernatural VHS tape traps a cynical Hollywood executive and a carefree blockbuster employee inside a magical new movie universe, they must outrun Nazis, aliens, evil grandmothers, serial killers, and find a way home. Thanks for that. Um, this sounds fun. Uh, serial killers, evil grandmothers, wow. Jumanji meets Last Action Hero. I love both of those. Last Action Hero, underrated masterpiece. Um, the title is Last Blockbuster, and I think there already is a TV show called The Last Blockbuster. I just want to... Uh, there is a documentary, yeah. Documentary, yes. Thank you for that. And I believe they did a Netflix series inspired by it, perhaps, which may have just been called Blockbuster. Um, but, uh, yeah, you may need a different title, but I get the idea. This is sort of set in the late... 90s i'm guessing or early 2000s is that right no no it's set in the present oh it is because the blockbuster employee is actually working for the last blockbuster oh 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 okay so so the final blockbuster an employee of the final existing blockbuster in alaska right yeah um so when in in, uh, in oregon i believe oh oregon okay a supernatural VHS tape traps a cynical Hollywood executive and carefree blockbuster employee inside a magical movie universe. And they basically have to... It's like Wizard of Oz style. They have to compete with various antagonists and challenges in order to get back home. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I like the basics, but I'm missing a bit of motivation um, for the characters. Like, what actually brought these two into conflict and what is their relationship to each other, right? Like, things, things like that. I might understand if you were like... It's the executive that showed up to shut down the last blockbuster or something like that. That's, I that's, that's, that's the story, yeah. Oh, that is it. Okay, can you explain maybe the connection there then? Yeah, so I'm still working on it and it's all like, it's all still fluid. But the general idea right now is that uh, the Hollywood executive is the son of the owner of the last blockbuster, the guy who was running it. And he either dis he disappears or dies in real life or something, and the son comes back to this small town, and he became this jaded Hollywood executive that looks everything through financial gains. While as a kid, while he was going up with his dad, he loved movies for what they are, for the magic they bring, storytelling, etc. And so he comes back, he's like, fuck this last blockbuster shit, I'm shutting it down, whatever. And then he finds this mysterious VHS tape. And uh, I'm still working on how him and the other guy get transported together. But they are basically the complete opposites. The gotcha. So it's really less relevant that he's a Hollywood executive and more relevant that he's the son of the owner that's lost his passion for movies, right? Uh, 
I I had the version of the offer log line where I mentioned that I can maybe try to find it, and then I picked this one. Right. Uh, I mean, it's right. it's more important for the first act to know his motivation, what happens, etc. But I feel like it's more important for the movie as a whole to know who he is as a person. But that's not what draws him into the story. We need to know who he is at the beginning because this is a character's... We want to imply what the growth and change of the character is. And I think I'm picking yeah. up that you're saying this is going to be about him rediscovering the magic and appreciation of movies. Is that right? I still don't know what the exact theme would be, but something close to that, certainly. I mean, that will be one part of the general theme, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And do you see... Is that your sort of main character, do you think? Yeah, yeah, the Hollywood executive is the main character. He is. Okay, so it's almost certainly, it seems like it's going to be about something like that. He doesn't care about or is not passionate about movies anymore. He's come back to, uh, you've set it up, so like the last blockbuster is sort of a place where, you know, the blockbuster when you were a kid is where you would discover the magic of movies for the first time. So it's kind of linked to that idea of like, you need to get back to your roots and what made you happy as a kid and all that kind of, you know, ratatouille. Kind exactly, of stuff exactly, like that. yeah. I'm with you. But if you're setting it up, then you need to, in the logline, help us understand that. Just saying that he's a Hollywood executive doesn't doesn't tell us where he is in terms of the character in his point A, in his growth of change from point A to point B to point C. Um, so it just, that's just his job, right? It's not actually telling us what his relationship is to, the, or his connection is to the action of the movie or to this other character. So you might want to rethink the logline a little bit along the lines of something like, um, you know, uh, he when he returns to his hometown the uh you know a the son of a small the son of a small town video store returns to you know the town where he grew up or whatever um he's now become this jaded executive he comes back to shut down the family business for, to, for the last shred of profit i realize i'm going a longer than a log line but this is just like how i'm just sort of thinking out loud here it would be like he goes back to his you know uh you you want to get that sense if he returns to where he came from but he's grown apart from his sort of roots and maybe in his effort to shut down the last place, is is this employee like the one that really is trying to stop that? He's like taking the the leading the charge against the shutdown of the blockbuster or something like that. Maybe he's the manager of the store or something like that. Or it could even work if he's a if he's an employee who's just really passionate about movies, right? If he's kind of like the Tarantino behind the counter kind of thing, then that could be a really nice way to uh, you know draw that really clear contrast between them. One of them is passionate about movies and understands. The magic of them and things like this one of them has grown apart from that and this is going to be the journey of him sort of learning to reconnect with that before he can finally you know click his heels together and get back to kansas yeah exactly you're like almost 100 percent right that's exactly the story and the the cafe blockbuster employee he's like like the Brad Pitt's character in True Romance, like Kevin Smith's clerks, only he's 50 years old and eastern european but besides that he's like this carefree movie loving geek basically okay so yeah and and so to that by that same token it might be helpful if you focus on not so much the fact that he's carefree or like a personality trait as much as you focus on the fact that he is the one that's you know when a, a movie obsessed employee is going to be the one that acts as his companion on this journey we would understand they probably drive each other crazy at first but would need to you know learn to rely on each other and stuff like this but if you just focus the logline around the values that they have at the beginning of the story, then we'll understand how they're tested and how your main character will have to change. Gotcha. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No problem at all. Um, any, any big questions about this one? Uh, no, no, not really. I'm still in the early stages, so I'm still working it out as I go. Cool, cool. And I would just... Yeah. Okay, that... actually, I have, I have one. So... Uh... I know that referencing other movies in your scripts is kind of not ideal, but I've decided to go all out in the other direction. Like they will basically reference movies all the time because how imagine the thing to go is uh, it will be like, like game levels. They will, they will go from one genre to the next. And when they find themselves in a, in a new surrounding, they first need to figure out what type of movie they are in. Is this like a comedy? Is it like a scary movie? So they are looking around for the setting, for the other characters. And they will constantly talk about other movies, other scenes, other plots. What do you think about that? 
Sounds fine. You can totally do that. Um, if you're going to do that, though, you might want to help us. You, it's possible you could build that into the logline a little bit, too. You know, when they fall into an old VHS of Fern Gully or something like that, like you could maybe even hint at, if there's like a main genre that they are going to be experiencing. No, that, that is not. It will, uh, I mean, the idea is that it's like a complete movie universe of all the blockbusters that ever came out. I see. I see. Okay. So, yeah. And yeah. That, that's the idea yeah it's, it's totally fine you can you can absolutely do that and um some other comps or things to look at might be did you watch ready player one yeah yeah i, I was thinking of putting that as a comp i read the book and watched the movie as well they they do that like sort of a thing it's like really that. close as a comp yeah mm -hmm. and um is do you see this as more for kids or more for adults uh, adults like like pg-13 Flirting with R rated by but PG thirteen, yeah. Okay, I would probably ins I would swap out Jumanji for uh, Ready Player One then in that case. I was gonna uh, say because of the vibe, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, because of the vibe. That's a PG family adventure movie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think. Although yeah, I didn't think about a... Jumanji as a PG movie. Yeah. It is. It does have some pretty scary parts, honestly. When I was a kid, at least I thought it was, but um. It is PG, and um, I, I was going to suggest if, if it was more kid-oriented, then also the Page Master would be a pretty good comp. I don't know if you even know that one. Maybe I'm the only one that watched that. I don't even know what that is. I'm sorry. Page Master. It's a Macaulay Culkin fantasy adventure from the 90s about a kid that ends up having to sort of go into the world of books, like library books, and he goes from genre to genre of different library books. It's, it's pretty entertaining. Also, it's basically, yeah, I'll check it out. Thank you. Thank you for that suggestion. Also. No problem. Yeah, Page Master. Yeah. Um, so Thank you, Connor. I really appreciate it. No problem. This is a strong. I like the foundation of this idea. I think there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, so you'll just need to sharpen the the characters a little bit in the logline, help us understand their motivation and connection to the events of the story, and you should be in great shape. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have plenty of time for more, or for questions, or for comments, or any other brainstorming you guys want to do on your premises for your feature films. What else have you guys got? Feel free to raise a hand or leave a question in the chat by mousing over the classroom channel and clicking that word bubble that says open chats. Going once, going twice. Okay, we'll wrap up for today then. So um, we have upcoming free classes, Rewrite Bootcamp April 5th, Why This Story, which is week one of this class. Remember we mentioned that is going to be also free and open to the public week one. That's gonna be on April 12th though, so that's in two weeks. So if you started today, you have two weeks to get your, um, to incorporate feedback if you heard any today, or to just sort of continue pre-writing and brainstorming on your idea, keep fleshing things out, keep thinking about characters and moments and stuff like this. Um, and then we have Pilot Bootcamp that starts April 7th as well. So if you're interested in at least looking at the overview for Pilot Class, it's just like this course except for the TV program. And then we have the overview of Novel, which starts on April 6th. So within the next week or two, if you are wanting to write a brand new full script for a pilot TV show, or, or sorry, pilot, a feature, or to start a manuscript for a book, then this is a great time to join at scriptcamp.net. You can sign up, get unlimited access to every class on every channel uh, for our unlimited membership at just $29 a month. And also a brand new class on writing adaptations, April 14th. New stuff all the time. We'll always, we're always adding new guests and interviews and classes and materials. So we'd love to have you guys with us for these upcoming boot camp sessions. All right, we'll just wish you a good night and a great rest of your weekend. If you are not sharing anything else today, you can get your logline ready to start the feature bootcamp, so you have two weeks for fine-tuning. Um, for the feature class, start reading scripts. So you must read a script every week, minimum professional feature scripts from the blacklist, ideally something in the same genre world as your project, but it doesn't really have to be if you don't want to. But in any case, we have a link in any chat channel. If you type exclamation point blacklist, you can get a link to a bunch of 
professional scripts to read that you can make a list, make a queue of scripts to get through, and be reading them constantly. I really recommend reading three a week, but you can read one a week, absolute minimum. In the chat channel, you can also see if you type in exclamation point genre, you can get a link to a bunch of different pro scripts by genre. Okay, folks, that's all for today. If no one else has any questions, thoughts, comments, or feedback that they're seeking, we're going to wrap up. We will say um, we are looking forward to the start of this new boot camp session. And you can always tag me or Nacho in a chat channel by typing our names, or you can email or um, send a Discord message to myself, Connor at scriptcamp.net, if you have more questions. Um, or we would be glad to see you on the server, not even not in classes, even just in our many different discussion channels all throughout the week. Thank you so much, guys, for coming by. We hope that you um, get a lot out of Script Camp, and we hope to see you soon at your next class or events. Um, thanks a lot, and have a